I am a competitive Madden player that has made thousands of dollars playing the game and who also won $10,000 for being the best player in their country. Now we will find out. Offense is on the field. The offense is on the field. It's a two point conversion for Swole. The it final game. This. The finals Makes of the, the challenge. Snap. He's under pressure. He's rolling to the right. Throws this one out. Hopkins he in the corner it. of the zone. He makes the catch. The two point conversion. And in this video, I'm going to show you 10 crucial tips that I believe will make you almost unbeatable in any Madden, especially Madden 24. And make sure to stay to the end because some of the later tips can instantly win you games right after watching this video. Now remember to subscribe to the channel for the best Madden strategy content from an actual active competitor. The first tip is called shading down your yellow zones. The reason you need to shade down your yellow zones is because if you don't, they actually end up being completely useless. So for example, I am in the play four verticals and gun bunch, which is arguably the most common play in Madden. Now, if I leave my defense completely stock with a hook curl on the field, which is an example of a yellow zone, like a vert hook or whatever it may be, if I leave this player on the field exactly like this, you will see that he covers nothing on this play. The tight end is wide open. It's a really easy pass for me to throw. I can also throw the running back. So I'm gonna call the exact same play, and then I'm just gonna throw the running back in route wide open for possibly a first down and more. That obviously is something we wouldn't want to happen for our linebackers because we want them to cover the routes on the field that they're designated to cover. So instead, if we actually just shade down our hook curl or shade down our yellow zone by pressing triangle or Y on Xbox and down on the right stick, you will see that this will work perfectly. The hook curl will actually cover the tight end long enough for the tight end to reach the inside quarter and then it'll come down to play the running back in route. So let me just snap the ball and show you guys exactly what I mean. Once again, if I go throw the tight end right now, the linebacker is right there. And if I tried to throw my running back late in the play, you will see that the hooker will actually come down and play the running back and it'll be right on top of it long enough for the hard flat or whatever zone you have to knock it out. So in general, if you are using a regular yellow zone, it won't cover anything. And if you use a shaded down yellow zone, it'll actually cover a significant part of the field and come down on the flats late in the play. The second tip I like to call the easy way to good pocket. Pocket is something lots of players struggle with as they often step way too far back and take a long sack pretty much ending their drive. Now what's an easy way to have good pocket without playing thousands of games and having pro level situational awareness? Well, what I do and I find it extremely effective is that if I want to have good pocket or I know I'm gonna start trailing back, I'll just hold the left stick up. And doing this on its own will make your quarterback's first step be up in the pocket. So even if you start to back up, you'll be in a really good position to not have any premature sheds and you won't take too long of a sack if you do take a sack. And on top of that, your reads will be much more open because new passing windows will be there for you. So all you have to do to have good pocket or at least better than average pocket is before you snap the ball, make sure you're holding the left stick up. This will make sure that your first step is up and you'll have a lot more time in the pocket while also having the ability to scramble if you need to. Tip number three is the zig flat concept which is by far the best way to get a guaranteed five yards whenever you need it. Now to run the zig flat concept, it's important to have the player on a zig and the player on the flat on the short side of the field. That will make it so that no zone in the game can properly cover this zig route, which means they have to user it or you're gonna get a guaranteed five plus yards. So the only route you're looking at when running the zig flat is the zig. You can either throw it really early or after it cuts because there will be a very large opening for you to throw it. So you would think that this cover four drop defense would do a great job at defending it with the hook curl and the hard flat, but what you'll actually notice is that the zig will be wide open for an easy five yards. So when I snap the ball, you will see the zig is open, very easy for an easy possession catch. Now this concept is particularly good in the red zone. So once again, to set it up, all I'm gonna do is put a flat on the outside receiver, a zig on my inside receiver, and this is specifically great in bunch and tight sets, and then anything else on the field doesn't necessarily matter as long as it doesn't infringe on our original route concept. So in this case, you're gonna see the exact same result and this is a great way to score in the red zone when you need about five yards. So I'm gonna snap the ball, look for the zig, and what you will see is it's once again wide open for an easy possession catch. So if you're looking for a great money play that gets you five yards every single time, the zig flat concept 
is the one that you should be using. Tip number four is avoiding bad route spacing because there's a huge difference between a route concept that looks like this versus like this. And often bad route concepts lead directly to interceptions that can be easily avoided. Now to have good route spacing, it's pretty much as simple as passing the eye test. So for example, this is the play curl flat and trips tight end. Would you say that this is a good route concept? Your answer should be, it's an okay route concept. You can see two routes, this post route and this tight end will be at the same part of the field at the same time. But if I showed you something like verticals, would you say that is this a good route concept or a great route concept? You would say this is a great route concept because no two receivers are gonna be at the same part of the field at the same time. So let me show you a couple good route concept ideas that you can apply as well as showing you some common terrible route concepts that I see all the time from novice and intermediate players. So a great route concept if you're in a trip set is something like a post slant. So I'm gonna set it up really quickly. Something like this, where you have an in route, a slant, a flat, and a streak. Now at no point in these plays will the slant, the in route, the flat, or even the streak be at the same part of the field at the same time. This will make it impossible for a user, so let's say I'm gonna use our tranquil here, to cover both the slant and the in route at the same time. So that means that they have to actually choose which person to cover. And because of that, that can result in many open passes for you. So you don't want to have players like this. I'll give you an example. If I were to put three curl routes on the left side of the field, it would be very easy for this hook curl to go and just cover both, right? So in this case, I could easily sprint to triangle if you tried to throw that. I could sprint to circle if you tried to throw that. So what you really need to focus on is when you're designing a route concept, are these two routes gonna be at the same part of the field at the same time? So another great route concept idea that you could maybe use is something like this, where you have a corner route, a flat route, and a backside curl. And if you wanna get really nifty, you can also attack the flat on the right. So in this case, no two routes will be at the same part of the field at the same time. So the user, if they're in a cover four drop, let's say, which is a very common defense, has to choose if they want to cover the tight end, the post or the corner, my apologies, or the flat row. And because of that, the user has to actually make a decision. It can't just sit in a spot and cover every route concept very easily. So as long as you avoid really bad route concepts, you'll be in a great shape to put good route concepts on the field that will result in easy gains for you and simplify your game. If you're enjoying the video so far, you should definitely check out my exclusive content on victoryformation.gg. Currently, we have my entire Steelers tight doubles offense that will nearly make you unstoppable and my brand new heavy box dollar defense that is taking the community by storm due to its aggressive heavy blitzing techniques. We also have over 60 game-changing tips in the laboratory, and just three of these tips in the lab showcase the easiest way to beat man coverage, the best way to run the ball, and the best disengaged defense in Madden 24. Unlock everything for only $9.95 and take an additional 15% off with code SWOLO. One of the most popular abilities in Madden is Threat Detector, as it will highlight blitzing defenders on third and fourth down. This is where tip number five directly comes in, and that is bluff blitzing. So to use the bluff blitz mechanic, you just want to press triangle or Y, press the button again, and then find the player on the field that you want to bluff blitz. So in this case, I'm gonna bluff blitz the X slot cornerback on the right side of the field. Then in this case, he will go on a number of different zone responsibilities. So in this case, because he's already blitzing, he's gonna go on a three rec, but my opponent sees him as a blitzer. So if they're using the threat detector ability, then they're gonna see this slot cornerback is coming to blitz them. The slot cornerback will run down and then into a zone. So let's just show you an example here. You'll see him run in and then back to his zone. And that three rec will actually do a really good job at covering the middle, the short middle of the field. But something that I like to recommend to people is don't pick a play where the player is already blitzing. So if they're already blitzing in a play like this, they're only gonna be able to go into a three rec, which isn't that great for most blitzing defender positions. Instead, I like to run plays like cover four drop. So if I call cover four drop here, what you'll actually see is that when I bluff blitz the slot corners, they actually go back into their normal curl flat zones as opposed to bluff blitzes. 
this is much better than using a bluff blitz three rec. This actually gives you a bluff blitz curl flat. And when you do this, you can see the curl flat will actually do a pretty great job at actually defending the flats on the field, which is great if your opponent thinks you're blitzing, their first instinct is going to be to throw to the flats. Tip number six is simple, which is always use a velocity ability like pass lead elite or set feet lead. This will make your passes faster so that you can actually make those tight window throws and sideline grabs even versus KOs. If you choose not to use one of these abilities, the ball will be in the air longer and make it easy for your opponents to get interceptions. In regular teams, the players with these abilities are Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, Aaron Rodgers, and Justin Herbert. So use them if you can. Tip number seven is only use fast handoffs. This means that if you have a right-handed quarterback, your handoffs will be faster to the left. And if you have a left-handed quarterback, your handoffs will be faster to the right. This also means that if you go against this rule, you will have a slow handoff and it will often result in a loss of yards. Tip number eight is to spam the juke move, as it is by far the best skill move in Madden 24. Not only do juke moves evade the CPU, but they will often evade user-controlled defenders. The other reason I recommend the juke move is because of how ineffective the other moves are. Spin moves don't break tackles, and jurdles often result in fumbles. Tip number nine is backing off your cloud flats, which is extremely important if you want to defend any corner or crossing route. If you do not do this, chances are you will be leaving the sidelines wide open every play. So to back off your cloud flat, all you have to do is press triangle or Y on Xbox, X or A on Xbox, and then you need to locate the receiver that is closest to the sideline on the side of the field where you want to back off your cloud. So in this case, that's number 13, Gabe Davis. He's closest to Legereus Sneed and the sideline. So I'm gonna press circle and then up on the right stick. And what you will see is that backs off our cloud flat. And you can do this to pretty much anybody. We can also do this to our outside receiver on the left side of the field. So we can back off for Stefan Diggs as they will do a fantastic job at defending the sideline of the field. Tip number 10 is to spam RPOs as they are the cheesiest and most effective way to get downfield without any skill. And that's the reason MCS pros like to use them so much. The reason RPOs are so effective is because you can hand the ball off, you can throw the pass, and if you have an RPO read, you can even take it with your QB. Now, RPOs in general are effective, but the ones that are the most spammable and the most overpowered and the most effective are the RPO reads, because you can also take it with your quarterback on top of handing it off to your running back. So just pick any play that begins with RPO read and you're gonna have a really fun time. But nevertheless, RPO alerts, even the ones that are under center are still very effective and better than regular runs. And you could spam these pretty easily as well. So in this case, that's RPO alert wide receiver screen, which is a fantastic example of a great RPO alert. But in this case, I'm gonna go over the RPO read and why you should definitely be spamming it if you have one of these in your playbook. And if you don't, maybe consider switching to one that has one of these in the playbook. Unless you're in tight doubles, of course, because then it's worth it. Nevertheless, I'll show you why it's so effective. If someone is running a three down line set like Dollar, which a lot of people run in Madden 24, if they're running the defensive line spread, chances are you could hand off the ball and guarantee yourself at least five yards extremely easily. On top of that, what people will do to counter the run is pinch their defensive line. But if they do pinch their defensive line, you will see that the slot cornerback will turn into the read defender. And that'll make it so that the bubble will always be wide open because the slot corner will go and play the running back or the quarterback. On top of that, if they do everything right, like shift their defensive line and do all of this, chances are you can usually take it with your quarterback, right? So in that case, you could see that you have a pretty big lane to take it with your quarterback. And that's why these are super overpowered and really don't require that much skill because you only need to make a very quick decision and only one decision at that. And the yards are pretty much guaranteed even if you do make the wrong decision. After watching this video, you'll be well on your way to man dominance. And if you're looking for specific offenses and defenses you can apply these concepts to, you should definitely check out these two videos.